Alright, what's going on YouTube? It's Joey here, back at you with another review in our Hollow Week sort of series. And I was on the road last night driving to work, and I listened to Corn playing live from Los Angeles, doing this L.A. show that uh, really was career-spanning and full of a lot of soul and energy. I thought it was special, John Davis even sort of calling out to the road, you know, audience and, you know, including me as I was listening to it from afar. But that got me thinking, well, Korn is kind of a darker band. They've got some sort of Halloween-esque thematics to their music. I think John Davis has had his own sort of... Uh, you know, touches in the horror space, writing something with Clive Barker once upon a time that we've yet to see manifest. But all in all, having that darker imagery, having that darker sound, I think they lend themselves to being, uh, you know, quite worthy of a band you should listen to around the month of October, right? So Corn being from 93 has had a lot of changes, a lot of albums, and I was going to do uh, Follow the Leader. We did Issues a few months back, which is an album that sort of was pivotal for me in a, you know, coming-of-age sort of way. But I was going to step back to follow the leader, and then I realized that The Serenity of Suffering, a uh, wonderful title, uh, just released uh, nearly a week ago today. And uh, in the same likes of being able to be called the godfathers of new metal, if you will, I think you can't really brand corn in that space, because they're not new metal. They're not hip-hop. They're not metal. They're not funk. They're not whatever. You know what they are? They're fucking corn. Okay, so part of my French, they are corn, and nobody sounds like corn. Corn is their own tone. Uh, a, a lot of imitators, um, but don't get there. And I think it's a combination of John Davis's vocal, you know, the the slapping bass tone that they get, and uh, some of those screeching guitar tones that really tie it all together in a unique way. And I think it goes with uh, a very broad attempt to not uh, put walls around what they can or can't do. Whether they're bringing in hip-hop elements and people like Ice Cube or, you know, dubstep elements and things like Skrillex, they're always pushing the envelope of what you can do with music, and in that sense, I think they're just a rock and roll band. And not in the uh, general genre term, but in the most layman of senses, what rock and roll was, a sort of obligatory term to say, breaking the rules and just making things good and different, that's what they did. That's what they do. So, to take it a little further, you know, a band that's put out a lot of material, like I said, the Serenity of Suffering is their 12th album. They've been on countless charts, they've got two Grammys, they've, you know, sort of exposed themselves internationally to all sorts of audiences. I think returning to a really heavy sound, which is what the uh, Serenity of Suffering does, was smart. Uh, some of the most heavy-hitting stuff that Korn has put out uh, since, man, since, since probably Issues. I think it, they really tried on the paradigm shift to get there. And they didn't. I think, I think they were close. But I think that this new album uh, really gets them there. And so being the, the metal melting pot they are, uh, sort of borrowing from that, I think being on the Korn 20th anniversary tour or whatever, uh, playing their first record cover to cover, wonderful set I saw last year, uh, you know, bringing out bands like Islander and, and Suicide Silence sort of gave them a taste for the heavy. And Jonathan Davis, J Devil, whatever you want to call him, at 45, just killing it with some of the best vocals I've ever heard uh, Cohen put out there. And that goes from his, his octaves that he hits on regular singing to his low, deep sort of vocal spaces all the way into his unique, like, rah, rah, noises, and especially, most especially on this record, is his over-the-top screaming and, 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 and just, you know, true metal vocal that you get. Uh, really, uh, probably stands out the most for me as just seeming to, to take whatever lessons that John has had vocally uh, over the years. He's really finally got there. He's, he's polished, and that is unique for a band of their age, to be doing something like that still this late in the game, but all the more credit to them, all the more, you know, sort of captivating uh, as this album is. So I happen to think that as we go through the tracks of the album, there is a little unfortunate that it seems very front-loaded. 
in that most of the good tracks are at the beginning of the record. But, you know, if you're into listening to albums come to cover, it's enough to draw you in, keep you there, sustain you, and then sort of, you know, play out at the end. Uh, you know, finishing track, Please Come For Me, which some of the sexuality that Davis is known for writing about, I don't know if that's meant to have a double entendre or not. Uh, probably not. But I, I think it's a very mature song. It's uh, in its tonality and production throughout this record. I think there's a lot of maturity uh, involved from Korn's uh, sort of stance. So, you know, uh, Rotting in Vain, it's probably the heaviest hitting song there. It has that twist light vocal, expresses, like John has sort of, uh, you know, recalled back to a lot. What Korn's music has done over the ages is sort of take you to those dark places in life and sort of, you know, we all go there and help you sort of just translate that into an emotion that's hard to get out. And, you know, sometimes dealing with depression or anxiety or these things, is, it's hard to manifest words. It's hard to, to vocalize that in, in a number of ways. And I think Korn's music uh, is a great way of starting, you know. It's, it's a great, honest form of human expression to get that out. And so maybe that... Right, right, style of nonsense noise vocal that he puts out there is, you know, it's that, you know, it's that feeling, it's that place. So as a Korn fan, since I was very young, uh, I, I can say that their music has helped me in dark times, and I think that this album is just them continuing to do that, maybe for a new generation, and continuing to be a strong, uh, you know, place of, uh, you know, sort of just... I don't want to use, like, religious terms, but solace, you know, a place of, you know, free expression for the, for the audience. And, and I get that, and I think that that is a strong, important value, an inherent value that a band is unique and true to music, as Korn is, can have that extra top layer. Um, Black is the Soul sort of brings in this multi vocal harmony that uh, I don't know if I've heard on a corn track before, and I, I can't tell if it's the other guys or if it's a double layer of, or triple layer even, of John, but uh, great. Great new addition, something I thought was great. The Hating. Now, the Hating song sort of builds, but the chug blast beats towards the end really rip you a new one. If you're into heavy stuff, I think they pull out one of the hardest stops I've ever heard them do towards the end of that song. Very good. Um... Then, of course, if you're into new metal, if you will, which, again, I think it's hard to sort of brand a lot of things in there because that is such a broad spectrum of music, but uh, you've probably been a fan of the band Slipknot, and, of course, Corey Taylor is here on A Different World, which is sort of continuing this, like, depression, apathy thing, you know, asking for a different world, if not for yourself, but for everybody, I don't know. But aside from lyrics, Corey's vocal... Very, very welcomed in the space. I mean, if they started a sub-band called Slip Corn or Corn Knot or something, and all the guys played together on stage, John and, and Corey's vocal paired with, together so well, and, you know, in the likes of something like a, a Taking Back Sunday, you could have two vocalists jumping back and forth in the style of music. Corey and John could sing together in a metal, in a metal band, and it would be perfect. I think their vocals play off each other so uh, wonderfully that it, it's very, very welcomed. Um, Take Me, that song uh, has to be the single. I mean, I don't know if we'll get it on the radio anytime soon, but it feels like a single. It's got the hook in there. It's very sort of, if there was a catchy, you know, sort of pop element to anything on this album, it would be that track. But, uh, you know, some sort of eerie guitar pedal workings on there, something that, as we're talking about Halloween, sort of, uh, I think fits the bill. Uh, die Yet Another Day, well, I might say Die Yet Another Track, if you will. The only sort of hang-up I had about this is that track, especially, sort of reiterating the words die and dead and kill and death and da 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 And as much as I'm sort of drawing on that from this album, especially as we talk Halloween, I think that that is sort of like beating the dead horse that is. Like, just come on, guys. You can do better than that. You know, you've got 12 albums worth of material and countless EPs and bonus stuff and all this crap. Just give me something a little more me on the bones, you know. And it's not bad. It's not a bad song. It's just lyrically a little flat, a little short of the mark for an album that I think is their best work since Probably Issues. That song just falls a little short of the rest, okay? No slights, just honesty. Um, overall, I'm going to give this album an A-. Uh, 
uh, definitely uh, reaches into my corn fandom and pulls out something good. Gives me a little bit to taste, a little bit to sink on, and will probably be the first cover-to-cover -cover corn record that I learned, take to memory since issues. Uh, been a fan of this, like I said, for a long time, and, and in and out of the albums, find singles on every one that I like. But this one, overall, seems to have a lot to offer. So if you're a corn fan, or you were a corn fan, and you're thinking about revisiting, The Serenity of Suffering is a fantastic place to jump in and, and sort of hear what they're doing right now. Uh, as a 20 plus year band, still got it. They've got the chops to, to cling on to and uh, they're going to they're gonna sort of tear you a new one. So, you know, their new drummer's been with them long enough now to not even call them a new drummer. They are a rehearsed band and this album feels very, very... Uh, refreshingly new yet inspiringly callback uh, of the old so there it is that's that is my take on this album thank you roadrunner for putting it out on the 21st just a few days back i am happy to add this in time before the year is over to the 365 series if you're a fan of things like islander machine head system of damn and you haven't listened to corn yet i don't know where you've been but of course go out listen to some of their stuff you don't have to have that album you don't have to own it yet i don't uh, we're fortunate enough to have streaming services. You can listen to the album right now on Spotify or wherever have you. I will put a link below. You can listen to it here on YouTube, okay? If you get extra bored, find me on Facebook at backslash Daily Vinyl Online. If you go on Instagram, where my whole Daily Vinyl thing was born, you can find me at Daily underscore Vinyl. And, of course, right here on YouTube, subscribe to my channel, get all the updates as we go through the remainder of the 365 series and other things. I put up a lot of record-related videos and reviews of concerts and such. And, uh, you know what? Like the videos. Let me know you're into what I'm doing, okay? Leave me a comment. What did you think of this Korn album? What do you think of Korn as a band? What did I miss? What did you not agree with, you know? All of those things. Okay. Anyhow, I'm going to sit for my Korn Yacopia cup. See what I did there? <laughs> and uh, hopefully take it off into the weekend. I think I'll be back on Sunday. It's Thursday, and I think I'll come back on Sunday. One to wrap up this month of October, and we'll do a, a bunch of horror movie soundtracks and scores. What do you think? If you're into it, stay tuned. That should be your next video, okay? All right. Take care of yourself. If you don't watch anything else, if anything, have a fantastic Halloween and uh, enjoy some corn, all right?